Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at electric field strength. So let's get started. Now, we first need to define what electric field strength actually is. So electric field strength is the electrical force per unit positive charge. And this follows from the rule that we use when we draw electric field lines, which says that the field lines will always go from positive to negative, i.e. in the direction that a positive charge would move if placed in an electric field. And the definition is using this same idea of a positive charge. So in other words, it is the force that a charge of plus one coulomb would experience if placed in an electric field. This gives us the following relationship. So we've got electric field strength E equals the force divided by the charge. And this just comes from the definition that we're talking about up here, saying that electric field strength is the electrical force F per unit positive charge Q, or the force per coulomb. And if we take our E equals F over Q and rearrange this for the force F, then you get this relationship F equals QE, which is on the relationship sheet in their exam. And it tells us what each of these things means. So F is the force of attraction or repulsion on the charge measured in newtons. Q is the charge in the object measured in coulombs, and E is the electric field strength measured in newtons per coulomb, nc to the minus one. And that just comes from this expression here where we've got force in newtons divided by charge in coulombs. So that's newtons per coulomb. Next, we're gonna look at the specific case of the electric field strength in a radial field around a point charge. So it starts here by saying that the electric field around a point charge is radial, we've already seen that, and is a case of the inverse square law, just like the gravitational field around a mass the charge is considered to be concentrated at its centre. Since E equals F over Q, which we've just seen, and we have an expression for F from Coulomb's law, F equals Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, then combining the two, we get this expression here, which says that E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. And that just comes from E equals F over Q. So we're essentially subbing in this F into here. So we're dividing this expression by Q. And that gets rid of one of these Qs. And then we're just dropping one of the numbered subscripts. So we get E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, where E is electric field strength measured in newtons per coulomb. Q is charge, which can be positive or negative measured in coulombs. Epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space, and again we've seen this value before. And R is the distance from the point charge to the point of interest, measured in meters. It then says to note that the electric field strength reduces quickly as the distance R increases because E is proportional to 1 over R squared. That shows the inverse square law part of this equation. So if we ignored the Q and 4 pi epsilon naught, we could see that E is directly proportional to 1 over R squared, or E is inversely proportional to R squared is another way of saying that. So what does this mean? Well, it means that as you get further and further away from the charge, the electric field strength will drop off quickly. Another note here is that electric field strength is a vector quantity, just like Coulomb's inverse square law. When more than one charge is present, the electric field strength must be calculated for each charge and the vector sum then determined. And we can plot a graph of electric field strength around a charged conducting sphere. And this is shown here. So we've got electric field strength E against the distance R away from the charge. And let's say this is the radius here. So imagine a charge placed on top of the graph here where the edge of the charge comes out to here where the radius is. Then we can see that inside the conducting sphere, we've got an electric field strength of zero. And then when we get to the radius, remember all the charge will reside on the surface of that conducting sphere. So the electric field strength rapidly increases here, and then it's going to decrease with distance away from the surface of the charge. And that is our inverse square law. E is proportional to one over R squared. So what we've just seen is that inside the sphere, the electric field strength is zero, and outside the sphere, the electric field strength varies as the inverse square of the distance from the sphere, i.e. E is proportional to one over R squared. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.